Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And with this one right here, we are talking Euphoria Season 2, Episode 2, titled Out of Touch. And guys, mm -hmm. just want to let you know, this is not live right now. I know that I am presenting it to you live, but this is not live. This is a recording. And so I'm still going to premiere this. And so there still will be a live chat feature available for you. I don't know exactly when this video is going to be uploaded, but when it is uploaded, I am going to be in the chat with you down below to engage with you. But if you uh, want me to actually like reach your question, I'm not going to be able to do that because it's not live. It's a recording, but I may be able to pop it up, put, pop it up, put it up on the screen, you know, for everyone to see. And as, as you can see, guys, right now, I am not alone. I am here with my lovely guest, Miss Tara with hey. Struggle Reviews TV. <laughs> How you doing, ma'am? I'm good. I am excited for this show. I'm excited for us to link up again and chit chat. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. And guys, just to let you know, this is Tyra with Miss Struggle Reviews. If you've never heard of her before, she does reviews and TV breakdowns for movies and television, just like myself. And also um, a lot of throwback retro reviews to a lot of our popular um, Blackfield cast as well. And she does a great job of that. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to follow her on social media, you can. Her information is on the screen. It is also um, in the description box of this video. And like always, you can head over to my channel tab. And there she is right here. This is her channel, Struggle Reviews TV. All you have to do is go to my channel right here. Click that channel tab right there. Scroll down and bam, she is right there on the second row. Yeah. So make sure you subscribe to her channel and show her some love too. Help her get to one billion subscribers. <laughs> not one yes, million. Yes. Not one million, <laughs> but one billion. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But Tyra. I'm new to the show. Um, mm -hmm. I did not watch season. I mean, we both watched season yeah. one. We binged it, but we didn't we didn't watch it week to week like everybody else. But no. everybody else was just raving about how great it is. And we dug in and I think we like it too, or we wouldn't be here. Yeah. 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 It, it's it's a pretty dang good show. You know what I'm yes. saying? I'm I, I'm loving I'm loving it and everything. And so I'm gonna pass to you real quick, ma'am. Uh if you just wanna Give your your brief breakdown of what you thought about season two, not season two, season one, real quick, and mm -hmm. then we can get into this uh, season two episode. Two. Well, scratch season one. Everybody's past that. How you feel about episode one of season two, especially with Nathan getting one. his ass beat? <laughs> the, the, the floor is yours. That's now. everybody's ahead. like main uh, go to. I actually like the entire episode of season one. I like the way it started off with Fesco's grandma and us getting to know because he, him and Ashtray have been a really big mystery, especially from season one. Mm -hmm. So I like that we started off with that. Everything in that episode was really good. Nate getting his ass what was like a little cherry on top. That's always yeah. wonderful and good to see. Everybody wanted to see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I loved it, too. I loved it, too. That was phenomenal. Not only did he get his ass whooped, but, you know, Mouse got his ass whooped as well. Or uh, he's dead. Mouse he's not, is dead. Yeah, he's dead. He's not he's not here anymore. Ashtray was coming through with it. He yeah, was like, Ashtray hey, is yeah. a ninja. He's a yes. secret. He's been a monk ninja this entire time. <laughs> and I'm not I'm like the, the episode one of season two is one of the best episodes of the whole series to me, even including yeah. one, because I like Fesco and Ashtray and I just love. Um, their relationship and how they was brought up in the story with the grandma because I had so many questions in season one yeah. but there was answer here in season two and I love the answers that they gave us because I'm not trying to be funny or disrespectful but it was just such a large question mark over Ashtray's head I'm like what is up with this character like is yeah. does he have a deformity a condition yeah. is he a midget is he a dwarf you know he looks like a little kid, but he's dressing like a 45 year old oh, man. man. Talks talking like, that like deep yeah, voice. Yeah, just like I'm he knows the business. I'm like, what yeah. is going on? But yeah, no, he was he's been there kid. since yeah. He's been there since the very life. beginning. And I just have to say, I love this just goes to show like just another reason why you should just judge people because you don't know them, you don't know where they come from. Yeah. Like Ashtray and, and Fez, like they are in this life yeah. deep. And it's not their fault, you know what I'm saying? They yeah, I already like liked Fez already. I already liked his character, but there was always that question mark. Like, it felt like he could have been something else or been somewhere else. Like, why did you stay in school? You know, why did you get mixed up in this? He seems like a pretty smart kid. He seems nice. But then when you watch the past episode, it's like, oh, you really didn't have a choice but to turn out this way. Right, 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 right. So uh, I, I'm loving that. I'm loving that. But 
Getting into this uh, specific episode, we're talking out of touch. As the semester kicks off, Jewel questions Rue and Elliot's new friendship, while Kyle hunts for answers. Nate makes a tough decision. The lines between fantasy and reality begin to blur as Kat ponders her relationship and Maddie contemplates the decision to end hers. And usually with each episode, they kind of start off like focusing on one character. Yeah. And that did here with Nate too, but this episode kind of took, um, you know, uh, uh, a page out of everybody's book. But yeah, I was so happy to see this at the very beginning. Uh, Nate uh, with, with just a bloody face. And, you know, him waking up, uh, going to the hospital. I mean, I was smiling ear to ear like, oh, yes, justice is served. You know what I'm saying? I was really feeling this right here. And oh, man. they're rushing him to the hospital. And he's tripping balls. You yeah. know, you, he, 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 you think he would be thinking about uh, some important things. But no, he's thinking about the pillow talk yes. with, with uh, Cassie. You know, with with her, with her cleavage all 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 out and stuff. All and, her life, all yeah. her life, it's always Cassie and Titties. Titties first, then Cassie. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I cannot stand Cassie. I think Cassie is so annoying. Really? Yeah, she is. She is big time. She oh, is big time. Man. I hope nothing happens to her. But uh, she's At yeah, all. she's she's always crying. I mean, she was yeah. freaking out in the bathroom. <laughs> um, she, I mean, she was freaking. Oh, you can't break up with me. You can't do this. You yeah. know, but. But we gotta you know, we gotta do all of this. I specifically wore this top for my video just so I can be chesty, so I can be Cassie, because it's just always wow, bounce, wow. bounce, bounce, bounce. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad the camera is not uh revealing all that, you know, for the kid. Oh no, ain't no kids watching this show, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so man. yeah, we, we know you like to bounce. But what the thing about this, <laughs> the thing about this is um he is imagining Nathan is imagining his dad just end up dying. Yeah. And he has he is the disgusting perv, um, smashing everybody in the neighborhood. I mean, I don't even know if I want to repeat it, but the 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 sex scene that he had, like literally right after this frame, I was like, my God. Yeah. All right, well, how much money are they paying you to accept this role? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want you to come while my tongue is in your ass. I'm like, oh Jesus. Lord. yeah. Uh, you're the guy that was eating boo boo. Yeah, he, yeah. He is... I felt like at that moment, uh Nate I didn't want really... that screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> We don't want that screenshot. Yeah, no. I felt like he was projecting because you would think with all that he's been through, he would be thinking of something else. But it wasn't just like he was thinking of just sex with Cassie. Like they had, I think they went through marriage. They had a mm -hmm. baby. They bought a house. Yeah. And I felt like he was putting his dad in there. Like, I just wish that he would just die. Like if I'm having a baby and I have a house and I'm taking all these strides as a man with a woman, then I could never end up like my dad because we all kind of have that feeling about Nate from what he's been subjected to since he was younger, watching those videos, the secrecy, all that stuff. Like he's like always two steps away from his dad because we well i'm not gonna say we i felt like since last season he was really really questioning his sexuality oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah he uh and maddie caught him out on that like nobody's 100 percent gay or 100 percent straight <laughs> it's a spectrum i don't yeah. know about that but you know yeah that's what that's what i she think was that's why he likes uh cassie because she's new she's fresh she hasn't seen any penises in his phone and none of that like she doesn't know anything about that all he knows is, you know, she likes me. I like her. We had a good time. I'm thinking about everything but Maddie. I love Maddie, but Maddie knows a whole lot. And Maddie has that disc. Like, it's yeah. just terrible. <laughs> I was just about to bring it up because, I, you know, uh, he was like, because uh, Zendaya coming through with the great narration, yes. you know, in each episode, just saying, yeah, but he's thinking about um, uh, Cassie, but knows he can't be with her because Maddie has the disc. Yeah. And right here, Maddie does have the disco so she has all the power in her hands mm -hmm. and so we're just gonna see how that plays out how do you feel about maddie though as a character you like her you feel her I, uh maddie for the most part she is one of the characters that feels like a real character she feels like somebody that i may know for some reason everybody else just kind of jumps the shark sometimes but maddie feels really grounded like she's super materialistic which is why i feel like she clings to nate at all because when we get to later in the episode you know she's about the finer things in life she wants certain things and i know she feels like she'll get those if she's attached to nate because you know i think his family is I don't, I don't even know what his dad does. I think he does housing development, something, but they yeah. have some money. So it's like for me to have access to that, why wouldn't I just stay with Nate? And after all, he does love me. You see him just snap back into reality. 
And even though he's thinking about Cassie, he sends her the text message and says, you know, Maddie, thank you. I love you. Like they're, it, it's just a hot mess. But I like, uh, I like Maddie's character. She's very entertaining and she's very honest uh, a lot of the time, unlike a lot of the kids. Now, nobody's 100% honest on the show. But she's, you know, I feel like she don't take any punches. She's just very open about she knows who she is. Already. I, I agree. I agree. Now, we got some new characters in the fold as well. Yes. Uh, Mr. Whirlpool Man. I don't know if you know what that means or whatever. <laughs> he was trying to fix the dryer. That's what he said. But we got mm -hmm. this dude, Elliot, right here. Yes. For some reason, have they explained why he has the Apple logo tattooed on his face? They have, have they... not. Yeah, okay. That's not. Just, yeah, this is kind of <laughs> random, you know. But right before that, Jules and your girl Rue are mm -hmm. seeing each other, getting closer and closer, and they start kissing. Oh, I have everything I want. I love you, baby. Yeah. And it's sweet, but Rue is nervous because, oh. uh, you know, the, the boy, this this Elliot guy right here. And I feel I feel sorry for Jules. Man, she looks mm -hmm. high as a kite or something. <laughs> uh, I probably should have got a better image, but there we go. That's better. Uh, but I feel sorry for Jules. She's getting her feelings hurt, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I have to say... Um, I like the way she handled it. You know, she wasn't childish. And, mm -hmm. you know, later on in the episode, she was like, look, you heard my feelings. Um, I can tell you have a crush on this guy. She was communicating. I mean, and that's just a normal emotion. Plus, these people are in high school. Um, I like that. But you think she's out of pocket or you think she's uh, justified? In her, I have, she like, a hard time with Jules and Rue, period. Those two, by far, are my least favorite aspect of the show, honestly. Like Really? <laughs> I love everything else that's surrounding them. But when it comes to their dynamic and Rue and her codependency, I just be like, uh, like, how long we got to stay here? I just, this whole thing with Rue trying to downplay the relationship with, uh, I think his name is Elliot. And she is trying to keep it low key. Like, I just hope she doesn't say, you know, that we did drugs. I don't want her to know I'm doing drugs. Like, that whole rose colored glasses things around Jules, like, of course, like, you knew when you returned when you saw her in episode one that she relapsed. So you just feeling like, you know, I'm coming into the fold, her trying to be that savior, that crush for her. Like, as long as I'm here, she has no reason to do drugs. Like, we're going to be okay. We're going to be happy. Like, it's just not realistic. Like, I would love for Jules to just get the hell away from Rue, honestly. Like, <laughs> Really? I feel like Rue is just, she is just so toxic to me. And Jules individually already has to deal with a lot with, you know, her sex or just her, her you know, she ran away. <laughs> she, you know, she had a lot going on. And I don't feel like Rue adds anything to that. If anything, I feel like she agitates her. And I, I, I do not mess, I don't shift them. I know a lot of people like love their dynamic and everybody was really excited when they got together last episode. It's like, finally. But me on the other hand, I was like, okay, well now what? Like, this is what you always wanted. But I don't feel like she's been her true self with her because she, I feel like when she's with you, she's trying to be something she's not. Like I can pretend I, I'm sober, I'm in love, I'm happy, everything's okay. But Elliot, which is why she's, you know, just pulling towards him. He is realistically what she actually is. He's on drugs. <laughs> He's confused. He's, you know, no, no like this, they, they, they're on the same wavelength as far as I'm concerned. So realistically, that's, I think that's what's drawing her to him at all. I don't think, I don't think she saw past like, okay, you wanted Jules. Now you got her. Now what? Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I, I do like Elliot um, mm -hmm. for reasons like, and my little recap, I was like, it's kind of, I feel kind of weird calling him a responsible uh, drug, drug addict, addict. Or, or, you know, because, I mean, he was able to check her post in the last episode and mm -hmm. was like, hey, didn't we do the same amount of drugs? I mean, this is recreational, but I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to kill myself, but you tripping. Yeah. Let me call the ambulance. And even later on in this episode, he was like, hey, I don't think that we bring the best out of each other. Yeah. And that was a very honest thing to say, especially mm -hmm. at the age they're at, you know, usually people are not that self-aware, but he's just suggesting that we're having a bunch of fun, but it may be best that we not be together, you know, yeah. or hang out. And so I just kind of thought that was dope. Yeah. Uh, right, right there. No pun intended. I'm talking about dope. No, that was nice. I even like the fact that even in her state, you can tell that he likes her, but he's not taking that moment to even try to, you know, take advantage of her or anything like he like he's trying to get to know her. Like, so why are you on drugs again? When did you just start? Like what right. age? That's kind of recent. Like he's really trying to see it would be great if he wasn't on drugs too, but 
<laughs> right, right. You know, we can't do anything about that, but they do have a difference there. I understand what you're saying. He's a sensible, responsible drug user. Rue, from what we can see, she has no crows with taking her own life, like at any given moment. We just never yeah. know with her. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you, she has Adderall on deck. Yeah. Just in case, you know, something's about to pop off. And so, come on, Rue, get it together. Now, help me out with this right here. We were talking about Cassie a second ago. What is what is going on with her right now? Uh, you know, she's, I don't know, I don't, but well, she was musty. And then, like, the next thing, her mama was talking about, when the last time you sh uh, showered? Shower, you know, yeah. I, 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 maybe I'm clueless or something. I, I'm just kind of, I was just kind of lost about uh, what, what she was going through. And maybe you can help me out. Cassie's me depressed. <laughs> Okay, that makes Cassie you musty. Is depressed via the situation with because you know they do a lot of flashback, flash forward type situations. This is way prior to her ever sleeping with Nate. So we are seeing her directly after she had to get rid of the baby and that situation with McKay. Now she's just so depressed that she she can't even get up to clean up or shower. Like she's just over it. Mm. And you also hear her say to Maddie, like she just kind of wants to take a break from men and just focus on right. herself, maybe be a little celibate. Right. And Maddie kind of gives her the advice to, you know, oh, okay, well, don't go looking for anything, you know, just kind of keep your head down, you know. But uh, you see in that moment, you see Nate approach her like she didn't go looking for anybody. It just came to her. And that's right. when we get into their situation. Now, what I found funny with their situation was once we get into that flashback and we see them actually in the bathroom prior to the sex ever happening. And he's kind of talking to her, trying to get confirmation. She seemed very sober to me. <laughs> She seemed very sober. It felt like, you know, we've seen them have a couple of drinks, but it felt like she was into it. Whereas that first episode, her in the bathroom, it was just like, oh, I was just so intoxicated. This right, was right. Now it just seems like it was something that she wanted to do. And I think we get that confirmation with Rue's narration because it's like, oh, yeah, well, Cassie would have never done that if she would have known that. Maddie and me and him were still going to get together. Like, first of all, they right. get together and break up like Every five times day. a year. Right, right. <laughs> That's neither here or there. You shouldn't be trying to sleep with him anyway because Maddie is your best friend. But it just seems like it's something that she wanted to do anyway. She's horrible. She's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and that that scene is right here, and she was like, yeah. "Girl, because you know you just love to be loved or whatever." And mm -hmm. like, I don't know what to do. Just hey, well, hey, when and whenever you want to just say yes, just say no. Yeah, and you know that's kind of like you was going going into all the flashbacks and stuff, and so yeah, yo, she Maddie, she, no. yeah. I just didn't she get it. I was like, no. Cassie, you could have anybody. You could be right. with anybody. Why? That's why true. this person? That's and true. then we're supposed to just keep identifying with her because oh my god oh god like oh shut up shut i say mm -hmm. that so much in my recap Sh shut the fuck up cassie shut up for real <laughs> for real for real <laughs> um next uh and you know she she had the blood on her legs for a oh, minute too so you gotta, gross. You gotta you see, she didn't even take a shower she's still trying to trying to wet wipe it off yeah. get i was thinking about that yeah get in the shower she's looking at the <laughs> rag and stuff i'm like Get in the shower. Just let the hot water hit you, you know. But oh. it, it's 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 that's weird. It's weird. It's weird. But you know, we got your girl Maddie. You know, she's trying yes. to live it up, and that's a beautiful pool. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. view. My gosh, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I forgot his name. Is it? It start with a T or a Theodore or a Teddy or something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But cute little boy. She trying to be a babysitter, trying on all the woman's stuff. Yes. Uh, I thought she was gonna get caught. Uh, you know, but um, that I don't know. Would you do that? Would you try on a woman's clothes? I would not. If, you would not. <laughs> I would not. But you just see how strong her desire is to have what that lady has. I felt like the lady was being a little extra with her unzipping that dress. Like really? I feel like you're too close to my face, lady. Like I don't know. She made me uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't pick it up at all. You, you lingering. You act like she want her to take the dress off, ma'am. I'm the babysitter. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought but she was going to get caught. You, yeah, you just, yeah, I thought she was when she left that drawer open. They yeah, just like yeah. to give us little heart palpitations for nothing. You know what I'm saying? For real, <laughs> for real. Like in the last episode, I thought Maddie, not Maddie, but I thought Cassie and uh, Nate was going to crash when they, he was mm. going over 100 miles an hour. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, glad. She was like, I'm soaking wet, but glad. Oh, glad that they, I can't, they, oh, you know, I can't stand Cassie. Like, just yeah. become a porn star already and just get for out real. my face. I'm over, <laughs> I'm that, over Cassie. <laughs> yeah, that's what your girl Kat doing, though. Yeah, trying oh, to be a porn star. Cat. What, what's so what's up? Disappointed, yeah. Cat. I thought Cat, Cat was going to be content with her boyfriend. She has 
I, I, I like her story dynamic because it, it's really realistic with what's going on today and what kids are susceptible to. Like, she has the perfect little boyfriend. He's all cute. Her little pros and cons list. Like, you I know can't what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she has, you know, things taunting her, little pop-ups. They were, I like how they were popping up, too. They were always all, almost popping up like little ads. You know, like when you're trying to mind your business on a site and little porn just pops up in the corner. You're like, I'm not I'm not on here for that. Right. But right, you right. see uh, the toll that that's taken on her. Not only does she miss that whole OnlyFans porn hub, her yelling at the dude with the small penis. <laughs> yeah. Why, why did she stop that? She was making three hundred dollars in 30 oh, minutes. Man. Well, you know, she was kind of trying to find herself and she felt like, you know, once she got a boyfriend, once things started to change for her and it was kind of making her a little promiscuous, getting her out of character. She felt like, you know, she needed to leave it alone. I think she had kind of that traumatic experience with one guy. It was just a voice speaking and it was telling her to undress and it just really made her oh, uncomfortable. Yeah. That's right. So it That's was just right. like, yeah, I, I need to leave this alone. But now yeah. she she's low key addicted. Yeah, yeah. She I'll fantasize and that stuff. Like oh killing makes me hard. This was crazy. This is I uh... was so proud in this episode because I was like, man. I have gotten almost halfway through a Euphoria episode and they didn't put a penis in our face. Pow, penis. Yeah. So I was like, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This he... show, like, I have never seen so much <laughs> I was telling you, I was like, Tyra, I don't know if I can do it, man. It's too many dicks for me. No, you know? They have a quota. I was like, they have, like, some type of quota to get, like, three penises in our face per episode. But luckily here, I feel like it was just once. But it was like, ah, there we go. But I feel like since she's, um, we've had this new rise in teens being kind of addicted to porn and that's kind of contouring their aspect or expectations for what they think sex should be like, relationships should be like, like, no, he's sweet. He wants to make love. Like, no, I'm, I need a man to come in here with a sword and like, I'll drive you. No, that's, that's not realistic. That's just what, you know, what she thinks the fantasy is supposed to be because she's been watching so much of this stuff and writing about it. I think she was kind of like a, um, like a sexual graphic anime, whatever writer yeah, <laughs> last kinda, season. Yeah, yeah. And she, you know, she just feels like this is how it's supposed to be when we know, well, I know, hell, if you're 16, 17, most likely it's not. Girl, he ain't about that life. Yeah, Relax. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sick, you know. I mean, yeah. do what you do, but I mean, if you're smashing over your boyfriend's dead body, <laughs> that's just a bit, uh, that's just a bit much, you know. But uh, he he was like you said, you know, really sending her home with that. <laughs> but why, why, why she and she started crying after this too. She was like, yeah, Nathan, not Nathan, but Ethan came in and ripped my claws off and fucked the shit out of me, and I'm just yeah. like. Why did you lie like that? I, I, she I feels know. like she feels like that's how it's supposed to be. I can't just tell them we cuddle in bed and kiss. Like that's not exciting. That's what kind of sex life is that? What kind of relationship is that? Yeah. She's low key kind of missing that little fire she had when she was out here just laying in low with everybody. <laughs> yeah. But I, I I I wasn't expecting this from her. I thought that she was going to be really content because at first we just started off with her wanting to lose her virginity and maybe you just have a boyfriend like now we're light years ahead of that she's yeah. like low-key being mean to the guy yeah for no reason um <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm gonna I'm I'm no, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and touch on it now like uh how did you feel about the scene where um it was later she had all the the models popping up trying mm -hmm. to talk her up oh you're beautiful love yourself love yourself I love that scene because it was just great acting to me. She did a great job. She was just a hyperventilator <gasps> in front of the mirror. Uh, but I just don't know where all this depression is coming from. It just... just don't don't even get me started. I get that with the entire show. I was hesitant to watch the show in general because I felt like it was that teen angst, Generation Z kind of... Like, this is not for us. I don't know if I can relate fully, but I find myself relating anyway in certain dynamics. Because, you know, it's like, I can understand that. I can relate. I can feel for that. I understand. But certain stuff, you just be like, y'all just so damn sad. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I like the women popping up. When I saw that, I just thought about um, how you feel about your body as a woman and people just having perceptions of things different on social medias because if you just see beautiful bbl you know bodies all yeah. day and you're supposed to feel like oh you know be confident you're beautiful like 
no you you're beautiful like i'm not like you you she was she was going back and forth it was funny yeah. <laughs> but it's like you know you can't sit and tell me that and when i get on something like only fans porn hub all these sites social medias youtube this is what people like this is what you're interested in don't come and try to tell me i'm beautiful but i, I loved all the dynamics it was just like the internet in all aspects were talking to her yeah, and a good thing because you said all aspects because you have different uh, yeah. types of women right here, different shapes, different sizes, you know, um, and that's wonderful. You got blue hair, red yeah. hair, stomach out, big cowboy hat, sombrero, whatever that is. And so, um, you know, she, <laughs> sombrero. She, yeah, I mean, I think that's what it, where, where is it? At? Is that what she had on her head? I can't. That is just the simple like sun hat. Like, okay, that's sun hat. hat. I was being silly, but. She 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 did a great job there. Look at this. That that's yes. that's some good old acting coming through. It's right just there, too so. much. Like she's that anxious just because she hasn't been getting that admiration from the dudes and the shit online. Like that's terrible. Yeah. I'm really glad that. I mean, we were. I felt like we were subjective to like find stuff. I felt like as far as like first of all, we didn't have any social media coming up, and then as far as like porn or something. Maybe you found somebody's old magazine. Maybe you were lucky enough to be up and not get caught and see some Skinamax. Other than that, you were not really seen anything. Now it's like everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's you can just you know grab your phone and you know yeah. it's it's pull it up right then and there. You know what I'm saying? So you know, nah, what's this? Uh, uh was it Cal Jacobs? You know, just go to the internet, man. You don't have to record and save. <laughs> all, all the discs that's just not the smartest you know No, he has to relive it horrible mm, horrible. horrible yeah big time but uh nate is uh in the in the car with uh with his dad his dad is just wanting to know hey man what's going on and they trying to tell him like hey man leave this alone bro you know like you know i don't want to talk about this and uh and i understand this so cow not gonna let that go no father would you know so mm. I, I i get that he right should there. i hate his little ex inspector gadget ass moments like of all people in this town you should be the main one keeping your head down keeping a low profile don't yeah. you go ask any questions to yeah. anybody like yeah. well i guess it's, it's okay because at that point he didn't know the cat was let out of the bag just yet so he just feels like he's you know the honorable man around town trying to make sure people are doing right by his son like i just i can't stand their whole family <laughs> yeah they're pretty gross i i, I couldn't stand them either because when he shows up at cassie's crib like this and she's all afraid you know i understand you going over there and you know you wanted to talk to the daughter that makes sense if i was in cow's shoes i would do the same thing too but i got really frustrated because he he was barking a little bit too loud you know in this woman's house talking about i wasn't talking to you i was talking to her yeah, Hold up now. Too much. You don't pay no bills up in this thing, man. You're not just going to be talking to nobody like that. And I don't know if it's because uh, Cassie's mom feels lonely or something and she's mm -hmm. happy she got a man in the house. I don't know. But <laughs> I was just like, Kyle, hold up, bro. That's that's not. No, no, oh, man. Oh, Lord. It's not. It's it, not just, yeah. Mm -mm. It's horrible. I was like really disappointed. I was waiting because, you know, any other aspect, especially when we don't want her to, we can see via McKay. You're outspoken, saying stuff you're not supposed to any other time. Right now, you have a, a grown ass man in your daughter's face, low key kind of threatening her, and you yeah. just sit there like I get confused with his dynamic a lot. I'm like, what is he here? Is he the? Because b before last season, I thought he was the mayor or something. Yeah. I'm like, he is just you know a dad in the community who's wealthy. Like he's not a police officer. Yeah. Get this man the hell out of your house yeah. for real. For real. And then for Cassie real. breaks and pisses me off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's freaking out about everything. You know, her mama uh, was calling out like this, like, what is wrong with your, uh, oh, what's wrong with Cassie gosh. out here? And so she just, you I'm know, so just over her. Ball. I like that even though the mom's low key kind of an alcoholic, she tries to be as attentive as possible. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I but agree. Cassie always finding the moment to give herself away. Like, I can't do this. We slept together. I just, girl, be quiet. Shh. Shut up. Why are you so loud? Yeah. Shut, Shut up. up. Sending like, text messages and stuff. Like, who does that? Damn us yeah. having sex was a mistake and Nate like Nathan been here don't you ever put that shit in the text message yeah, again what's, idiot. what's yeah. wrong I'm sorry. What's wrong with you? Yeah, she's a she's a she's a moron. <laughs> but it's she needs terrible. But you see that she I just don't know where her head is or why she would ever go against 
with with her relationships, nothing has been consistent so far with the boys in her life. You see from last season, she was really considered promiscuous and they were looking at McKay sideways. Like, why would you want to be with her? Like, you know, she's she's that girl. But she hasn't had any consistent real man in her life, not even her own father. So for her to mess up the one real consistent friendship and relationship she has for a guy, I'm just like, well, damn, Cassie, like, what, what do no you good. think you're going to gain out of this situation? She's no good. Besides, she's like Nate said, I'm going to be OK if she finds out she's going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, she's um, she's no good. She's for the streets. I mean, she's just like I have no problem saying it. I mean, she sleep with a lot of people, and even mm -hmm. okay, some people, s small select group of men, that won't bother them because it's like, hey, even if you are promiscuous, as long as you with me, and you know when you and when when we together and not don't step out of me, all is good. But that's not McKay. even the case. Yeah, <laughs> that's not even the case, McKay. I mean, she's still stepping out on everybody. She's sleeping with her best friend's mm -hmm. man, and she's uh, overly emotional. I identify with her though. I try to level with everybody on the show. Because everybody has their own little individual problem. Look at your face. <laughs> Cassie is being her dad. Every time she's promiscuous, being out there, she is looking for validation. She feels like she needs that male validation. And she feels like she gets that through her body, through her sexuality, through the sex, through her being promiscuous. She, she just, she just want to be loved. That's why I really like when her and McKay got together initially. Because I was like, for the most part, they both just really want some affection and to be loved, be loved outside of because they're they're not getting that at home. I thought that they were a really good match prior, but um, that was prior to him going to college and them being extra at that fraternity. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> she's just looking lie. for validation. Like I try to level because people have been commenting like you being hard on Cassie, like don't do Cassie. I'm like, man, forget Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, for real, for real. Like, yeah, she um she's just no she's just no good to me. Um I I, I she she needs to get it together. I'm trying to uh give me uh, I'm trying to spell this word. I was trying to send you a, a message, but it ain't working. I seen you okay, hold on. Let me do this real quick. <laughs> okay. Um uh, but I don't know. Cassie, she's um like I said, she's for the streets. I don't like her. She needs to get it together, but you know. um, no. <laughs> okay. okay. Got you, got you. Hi. <laughs> anyway, I will, uh, uh, hi. Now we got um, what's his name? Uh, Fez, Fesco. right here. Fez Cole. Pissed like this me guy off right too. here. <laughs> all right, why did why did he pay? Look at her he ass all out. Me off. I was so mad at him this episode. Like, because he so let because he let Faye come live uh, over there. Is that, yes, is that I was mad. <laughs> I was so mad because it's like. I was so excited, like, yes, because that last review I made for last episode, I was like, she brings chaos. Rue brings chaos to your entire situation. Get Rue away from your business. She means, you know, no good. If she's not trying to be your friend, she's trying to use you for drugs. It's not a good situation. So when she found Elliot, I was like, okay, there we go. Like, he's going to get some space. Just operate your business. Mind your business, even down to the situation with Jules and Rue. Like, you're involving yourself in stuff that doesn't have anything to do with you because you're trying to defend your sister. That's all good, but Rue is just, she's bad news. So when she was gone, I was happy. And then we didn't get five minutes without us like, oh, yeah, Faye, Faye's high ass. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, get her away. And oh, my gosh. He just can't even try to be, you know, he tries to be that hard ass. <laughs> don't go in my room. Don't don't touch my stuff. I mean it. And it's like, yeah, you want some of this sandwich? Like, he, he can't help but yeah, be caring true, true. and identify with everybody's situation because he doesn't have that family like that. He's such a caring person, but you can't be that and kind of be in the lifestyle that he's in. Faye needs to get 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 the fuck. She needs to go. Yeah. God. <laughs> I mean, my God. That's so much to say about. I mean, like, even when I saw her last episode, episode one, she shot the heroin in her vagina. Is that what she yeah. was doing? Like, yeah. Was did she did it? Was it like? I don't even know if I want you to answer, but I'm. <laughs> I'm just like, well, no, it looks it's just like heroin. Oh, yes. Like, oh my God. I mean, oh, she is gosh. horrible, horrible. No. This, she puts the manager off the, off the, I'm going to say off the mountain, off the building. I mean, like, oh, like, this is, 
you where, where you you get into the vent it's just like it's man. horrible i was just like if she has all of that and she's irrational enough she first of all you cannot trust an addict if she can do that to him and blow up his spot at this hotel they're in what's to stop the same thing happening in your home she has no and i love when he goes like ashtrays pissed at me of course because me and yes. ashtrays be here get her the hell out yes. of here you ever see yes. uh even back from season one when rue would come and she's just trying to get free drugs and ashtray would be the first like no nah, he ain't here we close she's like nah she just bypasses him but ashtray is forward thinking like get these females these addicts these druggies get them away from our business this is a business yeah. get her out of here yeah she is she is ridiculous ain't no, ain't uh -huh. nothing good about her just i'm i'm repulsed by by her man i mean and I, i've i've just never said that about a woman before I, I, I'll keep my stuff to myself, but Faye is God. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move. I, I just like she is, she is awful. Like, awful. I, just, I look at her and I get but, nauseous. You know, sweet old Fesco. He's gonna see the humanity in her. Cover her up with a blanket. You know, like he's he's just so caring. Like That's I really goodness. don't feel like this is the life for Fesco. I really don't. I don't feel like he has the heart for it because he's really? just. He's, I don't, he's just, so, maybe Ashtray ass, Ashtray about that life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. with him and really with it just kind of being passed down to him from his grandmother, I feel like if he had an option, he would have went to school and graduated. Oh, yeah. but you can kind of see, you know, even with his conversation last episode with Lexi, he's, you know, well-versed, he's thoughtful, he has a mind, he thinks about stuff. Even mm -hmm. his logic for selling drugs in the first place and McDonald's and hamburgers and all this other good stuff, you could do something else, but yeah, yeah. I, I just I don't I don't know how this is going to turn out if he's going to keep letting people like Rue and Faye have such close access to his situation because yeah. that's terrible. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's awful. And you're right because uh, Fez Cole was smart, and they showed that little feet that snippet of him in class, and he was really mm -hmm. good at math and stuff. And so uh, he probably would have. It's just you know his grandma got sick, and you know they, like I said, they had a business to run, so. Yeah, it's just you know unfortunate. Here's the uh, screenshot of uh, when she had oh, mask on. Gosh. Send the send the damn text message. Just <laughs> stupid. You just you a dumbass, man. I, I've I've never. I, I mean, anyway, I, I don't want to get personal, but it's just that, that was just crazy. That's just crazy. Oh, I'm so happy you don't like Cassie because I can't stand her ass either. <laughs> no, no. I mean, she cute, but well, she barely cute. Oh. She just, I don't know. Her her Cassie, stupidity it turns just me off. Fluff and, and titties. Like I'm just yeah. so sick of seeing panic tears and tears and titties. That's Cassie. Tears, tears and, and titties. There you go. Tear, tears and titties. Tears and titties. Yeah, that's like Cassie. That. <laughs> she getting she getting mad at Lexi right here. Rightfully mm. so. Like, you know, I like Lexi. How you feel about Lexi? I love Lexi. Yeah. I was so geeked her talking to Fesco last episode, and then mm -hmm. he went over there and blew up the spot and kicked his ass. I was happy to see that, but she was like, "Oh my God, he's a monster!" Like, no, no, he's not. Like, y'all should date. Like, talk. He he needs something outside of that druggy circle. And I was uh all with her when she was trying to make her way downtown on that bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm going to warn him. I've been passive all my life. People are walking over me. I love how they just snuck in that little snippet of the dad coming in stealing and just leaving. Yeah. I'm like this is this is terrible. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it she's is, you know man. the complete opposite from Cassie. They're they're so different. But I, I love Lexi. I love that she doesn't let everybody else so even if she is passive she doesn't let the kids or anybody else dictate her a lot of people are, are followers i don't feel like lexi is a follower she is very like i can think for myself and right now i'm about to go warn my man and then she just loses it you know why because Faye's ass was there Ugh. <laughs> just kidding. yeah it, it's disgusting you know and you know like rue was uh doing something on the bike uh mm -hmm. playing investigate uh, investor gadget invest you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. and uh oh i got the wrong picture right now let me let me get rid of that real quick um and she sees why does that keep sees coming up them getting in that truck right getting in the <laughs> truck making out nate is trying uh -huh. to break up with her and she mm. just she she not having it and she looks crazy as hell running like that too um <laughs> maddie is calling blowing up yeah. the phone 
And I thought that was so dumb on their part for the both of them at the same time to ignore her phone call. Like, at least not Cassie, because she's going to blow up the spot. She's going to blow it up regardless because she just doesn't have that joker face. You see, like, she's really been kind of low-key avoiding Maddie this entire mm -hmm. episode. Mm -hmm. So I, I just can't wait. And she just doesn't have it in her to be like that like she doesn't she doesn't have a poker face like she's always crying she's a very emotional creature <laughs> so oh, <yeah. laughs> it's oh, just yeah. not gonna happen but i just at least thought you know somebody answered let's just try to keep up appearances and then you get in the car with this psycho his whole vibe here when he's you know well and they're in that car and he's just driving it was very much giving me last episode not last at last season when he invited Jules under false pretenses to that lake. And I seriously thought at that moment he was going to choke Jules out and throw her in the lake. <laughs> he is, he just feels attending. Kind of broke up there. Oh, we, we still got time. Are you here, man? Like Cassie, he's about to murder. <laughs> okay. I thought Sorry. he was about to maybe try to take Cassie out. Like she about to talk. She's going to blow up the spot. She's going to tell Maddie, I'm about to try to, you know, I'm about to threaten her or something. I didn't know what he was going to do. But we did all of that for Cassie to get out and run off with her tears and titties. I was like, okay. And then they still end up smashing, uh, yeah. you know, you know. so that, that was just the way. And he going to ask her, are you going to be able to look uh, Maddie in the face now? I mean, yeah. these are just horrible people, you know. Because he can. He, yeah. he can, no problem. He has no problem with it. And right. last episode, I thought that him even approaching Cassie was kind of like a ploy to get at Maddie because he's always thinking ahead. Like he's just so much. He's like a little manipulator. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it was that. But through this episode, I'm like, maybe does he really, you know, have real feelings for Cassie? Because it did seem like it was kind of hard for him to tell her that, you know, I'm not interested in you in that way. Like we can't do this. It was a mistake. But clearly, I'm like, okay, so there's no excuse this time. Nobody was intoxicated at all. You both made a point to sleep with each other in this housing structure. Right, right, right. And, uh, like, what what is she upset about? What does she expect was going to happen? That they were just going to live happily ever after? That's just silly. So It is Cassie. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you want them to drop it in your drawers, that's one thing. But, you know, you trying to be fairy tale and love, I, I, you know, but oh, I guess that's man. what he's giving her house validation. Going. He said she was beautiful. Like every time they're together, like he's just indulging in her beauty and you don't know what kind of power you have over me. That's what Cassie likes. That's what she likes to hear. You see when uh, she was with McKay and anytime he would try to have a serious moment, really talk to her. Think things got serious, all she knew how to do was jump on top of him. Like all she wanted to do was get to the sex. And he's like, like, no, can we just talk? Can we just watch mm -hmm. a movie? I don't yeah. want to do that. So far, all he wants from her is the sex. And that's all he's going to want from her. Cause it's not like they can be seen out in public or go out on dates or really talk or any of that. And I think his name was Daniel from season one to kind of let her have it. Like, wait a yeah. minute, you let me on, and I, I don't want to have. I don't have any interest in you. I just want to smash. And he, yeah. you know, that, that was kind oh, of. Oh, she evil, was so but, hurt. Yeah, she yeah. Was hurt. Yeah. Uh, now, how do you feel? Uh, we was talking about this briefly earlier. Oh, that's the, the little balling scene right there. That's kind of that's kind of cute. Uh, but let's go back to our girl Lexi right here at the shop. She looks oh. cute right here. Uh, I was I was just like Fay. I was like, no, what is the name? Uh, Faye, I was like, just fall. I hope her head falls back <laughs> through the glass. Right there. I just wanted somebody to push her through the glass, you know. Just push her down. But did you think that? Uh, did you think that Kyle was gonna come and shoot him? I mean, it looked like he was kind of thinking about it, but I didn't. I didn't get that. I'm like, if you weren't gonna come in there and pop off, why'd you even come? I didn't know. I felt like I didn't know if he was gonna threaten him or. Like, why even come? Of course, oh, um, she led him right to him. But mm -hmm. it was just like, I, I feel like he just came to just kind of size him up and scare right, him. Right. And he didn't really just want to do anything. But, of course, I'm just like, you just need to keep a low profile. Like, yeah. leave people mm -hmm. alone. You're you're yeah. a pedophile. Go away. You know, it's <laughs> man, you know it's going to go down pretty soon uh, between oh, yeah. them. You know, it has to. But we got our ninja, we got our ninja ashtray yeah. ready. You know what ashtray I'm saying? Ashtray stay on deck. Like, yeah, I love yeah. ashtray. I wish he would go to school, but I love ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. He went to the cereal, but he went Ooh, to the cereal man. box to get the to get the gap. Yeah, you know? he stayed so, ready. But oh, the yeah. fact that he is all he he's always in his corner and he 
Ashtray is the younger one. He seems to be the smarter one and makes, you know, those decisions. Just like with Mouse. Like, I'm tired of him coming here disrespecting, Bruh. you know, going yeah. up. He pulling out guns. Is he going to use it? I don't know, but I'm gonna yeah. knock him in the head right now. Yeah, you can't like, just be doing that. You just, you know, <laughs> he, he's, I'm a, he's about it. But for you to step up your 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 your, your weight pushing, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel you. I feel you. I was happy that uh, I was I was just happy that he was excited to see her. I was really I really liked their conversation last episode and them getting together. I hated that Faye was there and that just deterred her. But I was like, girl, say something. Like somebody needs to say something. But it, it it just didn't happen here. I just they, I, I I want them to be outside of their worlds. I just want them to go on a date or something like just be yeah. alone, just right. go on a date and have a good time. That's nice. That's nice. I feel you on that. I do. That's what's up. So we're gonna see how that plays out right there. Hopefully, um, Fesco ends out on top because um, Cal mm. needs his ass beat too. You can't. Yeah, you a horrible person. <laughs> horrible person. So mm. we got Rue and uh, Coleman Domingo's character. Yes. The AA meeting uh gentleman. I don't know what his name is. His the name of uh I don't know his real name, but uh how do you uh, feel about him? His name is uh Ali. In the show. In, oh, in the show. Ali. Okay. Ali. Yeah. yeah, I uh I kind of got that he he might end up dating Rua Rua's mama. Oh yeah, they were checking for each other. He yeah, got his, he already yeah. got that deep, you know, that that we need Candyman voice. You know, he yeah. already got that that deep Billy D voice. Right. So right, he's right. just like, Oh, you know, he he's kind of cute. Like, girl, you ain't about that life. Like, yeah. I just really wish that I hate the fact that Rue's mother just doesn't notice that she's still using. I'm like, how is that even possible? Really? With her behavior and she she looks like a user to me. I just don't find that believable. I, I even hate her giving her the chance to pee and she's turning her back. Like, no, yeah, at yeah, the point yeah. that I got you out of rehab. And you, you've had situations where you rose your hand. You didn't try to hit me. You didn't try to cut me. Like yeah. you have no leeway. She gets to stay out all night. We barely see her at home. Like she just has so much faith that Rue is okay. I'm like, she don't look okay. But all right. But I like that um, he didn't just flat out lie and go, yeah, Rue's fine. She's clean. Right, She's right, right. It's like, right. yeah, she got a long way to go. Right, right. Like I'm not gonna I, lie I to that. you. Right, I'm not gonna right. go up your spot either. Right, that was perfect. <laughs> he he had to he had to think about it. He had to think on his toes. He was like, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if that's a question or a statement, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was like, Ooh, let's just say she got a long way to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I, but I thought, if they yeah. get together and he becomes a stronger figure in her life, he's he's coming over to dinner with how much he wants her to get better because he's been there and done that. I feel like he would tell her mom it's gonna oh, be a definitely. situation. If they date, that would be really interesting. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He he definitely can't say nothing now, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's just too early, and mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, you know, you don't want to blow up the spot and, and ruin the relationship. Uh, but I, I do like him, and because yeah. uh, I, I was surprised to see him, and so um, I'm, I'm glad that he's back or whatever. Yeah, he so. always pops up like he pops up real smooth, like a pimp. Yeah, I love right, it. Right on, right on, <laughs> like a pimp, like a pimp. But we got this last scene right here, this confrontation oh, between Nathan and his, oh, that's the Coleman Domingo, and his daddy. I want to talk. And he's like, you sure you want to have this conversation? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I do. Bring your ass in here. He's like, okay, let me shut the door. Because I don't <laughs> think you want your mama to hear, my mama to hear this. Yeah. It's like, well, dad, remember that girl that you fucked, uh, Jules? He's yeah, like, oh, yeah, you yeah, know about yeah, that. Yeah, look, look at his face. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> Oh my God! Look at the look at the eyes. Oh, oh, yeah. He he's out of there. He's like, yeah. Uh huh. Oh. I love, and I can't stand Nate, but I love the satisfaction that he got out of that, and we got satisfaction out of it because so yes. far, for however many years, he's been thinking he's just been getting away with this like some smooth criminal. No, your son knows about it and has known about it since he was a small kid. Yeah. But what got me was just how sinister he is to not even care. He's just like, well, yeah, let me like, I don't need you to explain yourself. You know, you didn't know how old she was. Just like I'm sure she didn't know that you were recording her. And it's just like, oh, then he mm. just directly jumps to like, okay, yeah, like you got the disc, like where's the disc? He's not worried about like, oh my God, if you know about that disc, then you know about all the other ones. When did you see him? How long? Like, yeah, where's the disc? Like, I need you to yeah. return that. It's like, yeah, I don't got it. Maddie got it. Like, oh Lord. <laughs> Kyle has to be the dumbest person imaginable. Like, <laughs> bruh, like, man, like I would never record. But, but what 
what got me was when he was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, the disc and that and that and the third. And, of course, Nate being Nate, you want to be brutally honest and open, but you actually lie about the whole situation. Like, well, no, this has nothing to do with me. This is still about Jules and Rue, and they were trying to blackmail me. He just, he completely flipped it. Like, they were trying to go to the police. Now I feel like they're going to have some sick, like, team up type situation. Like, they don't need to team up against anybody. They're both sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh quite quite interesting. I I, I cannot wait to see um mm-hmm. how, how this plays out because uh, he got him by the balls. Uh, Nathan, uh, I think yeah he's gonna use this as his advantage and blackmail mm-hmm. his father. I can see that happening. And last question uh, before we just wrap everything up, I want to ask you: um, Do you blame Nathan's behavior and the way he is now one hundred percent on his dad or majority of it? I do one hundred percent. Okay. I do. I do. Because okay. it okay. just, you just never know with, from the age that he found that out. And it's not even just about him finding that out. It's just their whole family dynamic. He kind of had that same relationship with his dad as McKay's dad. Like, you see that they don't even show the other brother. The other brother is like just some alcoholic. He's just an outside, the redheaded stepchild. But he has had all this pressure put up on him to be a certain way, act a certain way. And his dad is running around acting like, you know, the man of the community and of the household. Meanwhile, heathen. you're doing this. And it doesn't help that the mother is just completely obsolete. She's really submissive. She's really quiet. Like, Oblivious, he's yeah. just been made to, you know, you are trying to make me like, hold me to an expectation you're not even holding yourself to anything like not only you're you're just you're like why would just why would you even record that and leave it so like put that shit so like you could have had a secret like that shouldn't even be in your home if that's the kind of stuff that you're on and you're fetishizing it that much that you need to return back and look at it why would you have that there? But you see, you just see how much he doesn't care. He doesn't care about what his son has been subjected to. It's just like, yeah, who has the disc? Because we need that back. He right. just doesn't care. Right. So right. I do, I do, I blame it on him. I feel like Nate would have been totally different if he came from a different household. But right. with that confusing his sexuality, he they have that kind of macho man muscle shit going on where is there there is just it's it's sick and mess. he's putting yeah he's putting all his sick stuff on his son i feel like it's all his fault i really yeah. do because he did have about 40 pictures of penises in his phone as well yes um and i was just gonna ask like i mean i'm not a parent but i mean is there an age to where it's no longer the you know it's no longer on the parent it's the child's responsibility mm-hmm. to mold themselves i don't know when they move out the house or like I think 18, right about 25, now, I don't know. Right about now, we're the age that he is. This would kind of be the time for him to start just kind of, you know, I don't need to project or I don't have to be that just because my dad is that. I can be different. I can be normal. I, me having, you know, a complex with my, it may just be just from the disc or he might just actually, you know, he might just be that way. We really don't know. But I think right about now would be that turning point for him. Mm -hmm. But with Nate's behavior, I just don't see it happening. I got you. I got you. Well, yeah. Directed by Sam Levinson and uh, Nate got his daddy by the balls. And Mm. so this is a very good episode. Uh, Which one did you like more? Episode one or two? of? uh... I am liking once we got the whole trailer I was just excited from the go because I don't think we're going to get any filler any like I don't even think with the past season we got anything that felt like oh this is feeling like a filler episode like every episode just seems really good to me and you're going to get some bang out of either one like I really like them both it's really hard to make a decision but i think just off the strand of nate getting beat the fuck up we're in ashtray being a ninja warrior we have to go <laughs> with the first episode <laughs> yeah yeah that shit was fire i really did like that right there and so yeah guys we are loving the show uh this is fantastic it's dope as hell uh i can't wait to see what happens next i may do a trailer reaction video and um you know for the trailer let me take this down i thought i had that down uh because I'm, I'm excited and so i you know mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Tyra, do you have any um, any final thoughts uh, before we head out of here? Well, nothing. Like I'm just really waiting for all the shit to hit the fan. I'm waiting for Maddie to find out and McKay to find out 
And I just want to see, like, what does this mean for everybody? There is just so many twists and turns. And that's really why I'm so invested. I mean, I like Rue and Jules and their whole situation. But I really like all the other stuff that the show has to offer. And I can't wait until we get more into that. Already. Let me see. Has the trailer for um, Euphoria Season 2 ep- re is that out is the trailer out i'm gonna i'm not sure it should be okay yeah it is it is how about we watch it would you like to watch it go ahead i haven't seen it i have not either so let me go ahead and oh let's not do that let's let's press okay and so i'm going to stop the screen and i'm gonna click share share and i'm gonna click chrome tab and all right give me a thumbs up if you can hear the audio I can hear it All right, and let me just do that real quick Okay, all right, guys Well, here is the trailer for Euphoria Season 2 Episode 3 When Cal was in high school He spent every day with his best friend But as you get older Everyone drifts away I don't like you. Why? There's oh, something not. you're not telling me. Bro, hmm. are you on drugs? In all fairness, I did say I had no intentions of staying clean. As a beloved character, I feel a responsibility to make good decisions. So I came up with an amazing plan. Hi, Hi I'm Rue. I would love to present you with a, a business opportunity. What kind of business opportunity is she talking about? Hold on, let me run, let me run it back. Let me run it back. <laughs> when Cal was in high school, he spent every day with his best friend. But as you get older, just make me mad. Everyone drifts away. All right, so. Mm-hmm. First of all, Cal, they're talking about, when Cal was in high school, that's the dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They um the oh, Cal is in high school. We're taking it back. Yeah. So it looked like they was it looked like he was making out with somebody and somebody else was making out with somebody else and he was getting jealous. So maybe that was just mm-hmm. clever editing. But no, it, it looked like to me he was kind of making out with the female, but he was checking for his friend, his best mm-hmm. friend. Like he's always been this way you know with his sexuality and it's kind of festered into what it is now i'm sure but i'm just laughing at cassie here what you expect him for him to hug you in the hallway girl like get <laughs> out of my face cassie yeah, yeah, she tripping. <laughs> yeah. like why 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 are you, you? The cold I... shoulder look how excited not... she is look at her face mm, oh my god look at my man oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, so no. heisman you know <laughs> He, like, oh my god oh yeah she don't know what to think it's ridiculous it's ridiculous let's see now, i am loving this shot anybody want to go back and watch my review for that first episode because they never showed her actually doing the heroin but when she found it and how she reacted and her, for her to even need need to be you know her personal i knew she did that heroin really? with how okay. strung out she looked in the season two trailer gen- in general i was like yeah she took some heroin so mm. she's she's on a whole nother journey like really rude like girl stick to the drugs you know she has no problem trying any and everything i see i see i see there's something and so, you're not yeah, there's on. something let me take it back you. why there's something you're not telling me you know they're the heroin bro are you on drugs yeah in all fairness she's i did say drugs. they had no intention yeah but no everybody acts like they don't know rules on so, drugs so is this like you, you think this is a real scene or she dreaming or something when she giving a presentation you know oh like, she's always dreaming when she does okay. the presentation her okay, little fantasy okay. where she kind of explains her her fuck ups try okay. to make them make sense no yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. As a beloved character, I feel a responsibility to make good decisions. So I came up with an amazing plan. Oh, who who, who is that? Who was that that got hit? Oh, that was Cal. Okay, who? And it was from Ashtray. (laughs) Hold on now. Ugh, got him. Is that the same scene? No, that could be triggering. I feel like it's the same scene. I'm trying to go slow. 
Oh yeah. That, yeah, that's yeah. Right. I saw that's that's my oh, little man right yeah. there. I love him. <laughs> yeah. Hit him with the heat. Like, yeah, oh. that shit. Wow. <laughs> That'll work right there. Yes. As a That'll woman, work. That'll work. I feel like Hold on, what, 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 what is this, like a, a beauty mask? Like yeah. Like, I feel like oh, okay, I'm not sure trying to transit to the Joker or something. Okay. Who is okay. she kissing with this? Is that Jules she's kissing? Jules and Rue? Is that so. Jules and Rue? I think so. Mm. I think so. I'm just I making so. sure. Okay. Yeah, he getting knocked, he getting molly whopped. She got her presentation. Okay. Yeah, she about to do some scamming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just know she don't. She just can't possibly have a job. Yeah. But we yeah. see it's a, a few, a lot more presence from Ali Coleman Domingo's character. Mm -hmm. So clearly that means Rue is fucking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, um, you know that him and. Rue's mom uh, gets together because that would be quite nice. That would be quite oh, nice. Boy. She so. need a little love in dealing with Rue for the past two years. Yeah, she yeah. she needs some space. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that will wrap up this Euphoria season two, episode two, out of town for me yes. and your girl Tara. This is a fun episode. It was a fun breakdown. Uh, Tara, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Before, this is fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we head out of here, uh, tell all the good people what you have going on your channel and all that good stuff. Promote yourself and uh, oh, let, let us know what you got going on. Well, of course, we have more paid reviews coming up. I will be discussing Memento next week and uh, Gridlocked <laughs> next week. And I'm also going to try to do... Um, what is that with Mahersha Ali that I... Swan, Swan Song. Song. Yes. I really want to discuss that. Yes. And I also yes. want to do a horror movie. I want to get into Scream and Antlers to kind of mix it up on the channel. Ooh. And I will be discussing um, Women of the Movement next week also, too. Okay, okay. Well, Women of the Movement. Me, myself, guys. Uh, as you see, she also did a breakdown of uh, this episode as well right here. So you guys can go check that out. Uh, if you want to check me out, um, I have my episode one review up. Also, here's my episode two. Uh, I just did a movie news roundup show earlier today. Uh, did a reaction to the Bella trailer, and here's my screen view as well. And also, uh, Peacemaker episode is one through three. So make sure you subscribe to both of our channels and show us both some love because we would really appreciate it. Yes. And uh, if Tara would love to be back, she's welcome to do this with of me again course. next week because I have course. so much fun with you, ma'am. And so, uh, guys, again, I just want to thank you all so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget, I'm B. Avery, and that's Tyra, and that's just our opinion. Peace out, and we'll see you all next time.